Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video because I am sharing with you my top 10 DIYs from the whole entire year, 2021. These are the DIYs that you guys have left the most comments on, the ones you say, yes, we love these. And of course, our number one project that I'm gonna be showing you at the end was voted on by you guys, our viewers. Let's get started with number 10. Number 10 was one that I did kind of towards the beginning of the year, and it was a macrame wall art with items that I grabbed from Dollar Tree. So you wanna pick up a toilet plunger. Then I'm gonna remove the rubber portion, and then using my saw, I'm going to cut off the area that twists at the bottom. This year, Dollar Tree started carrying yarn, so you can pick up some yarn from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start by creating a handle at the top, so I'll cut off a long piece of yarn, twist it around the ends, and then I'll tie it in place. I typically will tie a couple of knots just to keep it really secure. And I'll repeat those steps on the other side, and I'll trim off any excess. Next, I'm gonna create the pieces that I'll be hanging in the middle. So you wanna get something long, like a piece of cardboard. Here, I'm using a piece of wood, and I'm gonna start wrapping it around this piece about 10 to 15 times. Then I'm gonna cut off the excess, pull it off the end, and trim it and that will create one of my sections. I'm gonna take one of those sections, wrap it around my board, and then I'm going to use those little thin rubber bands that you can pick up in the hair section at Dollar Tree to wrap around the top. I'll keep creating sections of yarn and putting them on my board and wrapping them with a rubber band. And I'll do this until I get the entire board filled up. Once you get all the pieces on, now the fun can start. I am going to wrap additional rubber bands around so it makes a fun pattern. So I'm going to start by putting a rubber band about an inch down on all of my yarn. Once I get all of them done, I'm going to hold out one of the pieces and start another row. Each time I go down on a row, I'm just going to leave out one of the pieces. So with my rubber bands, I'm creating a triangle shape. Now, as you can see, as I put the rubber bands in, I'm kind of pulling the yarn out at the side. That just makes it look a little nicer. When I'm finished with that, I'm gonna go back in with my scissors and cut straight across to make it as even as possible. And here's how the wall hanging looks. Number nine was actually a project that I did in a Dollar Tree Hacks video, but you guys love this. And I think you loved it just because it was so simple and so easy. And that's the project of pairing the glass jars from Dollar Tree with some Ikea coasters. So you're just gonna get your Ikea glass jars, any size, and then a two pack of Ikea coasters, put them on top. You can use them for cotton balls, Q-tips. They look so high end in your bathroom. This was the first year that I started doing DIYs at Five Below, and I got the best response. You guys loved it. You said, do more DIYs from Five Below. So I definitely have more planned for this next year, but this was my first Five Below video, and I created some rattan shelves with these really cool rainbow-looking top pieces to it. Five Below has a really big selection of shelves. I was really drawn to these woven shelves and I grabbed two of them for this project. Now most of their shelves are priced around $5. I bought this wood off of Amazon that's pretty pliable and I'll link it for you down in the description box. And I'm gonna start by just cutting off a section and because this rattan is woven so tightly, I can push it into the back of my piece and I'm gonna do that on either side. Then I'm going to get a smaller section of the wood and push it in to create a rainbow formation. And I'll do that with both of my shelves. Now I was just trying to figure out the sizing on everything before I stained it. Then I came in with a stain color and just put a little bit of stain on a paper towel and wiped it onto the wood pieces. Now this is an optional step. You wouldn't have to stain these if you don't want to. Next, I'm just going to place the pieces back into the shelves just how I had them. Now I have to say, I thought I was going to need to hot glue these in place, but they held really well. So I would say only add in hot glue if you feel like it's not holding in place. I really didn't need to add too much hot glue. And here's how they look on my shelf style. Number seven was actually a thrifted project that I did whenever I made over my bedroom this year. And you guys all link to all of these videos down in the description box. If you're just joining us and you didn't know that I redid my bedroom, you can go watch that video. 
So the lamps I picked up for $8 at the thrift store, and I was really excited to find two matching sets. I think that can always be the trickiest thing is finding two matching lamps and they were in pretty good condition. I wanted to dress them up so they worked well in my bedroom. So I started by taping off the bottom portions, anything that was gold, and then I'm gonna spray the lamps with two coats of a matte black spray paint. Next, I wanted to update these lampshades because I love the shape of them, but they were just not in the best condition. So I started by using some craft paper and I'm going to trace a template out with my craft paper. I was trying to make this project as inexpensive as possible. So when I was redoing my bedroom, I had some curtain panels that I was taking out of here and they were really in great condition. I just wanted to update the space with some different blinds. So I'm actually gonna be using the curtain panel fabric to cover my lampshades. When I was done creating my template, I put it on top of those curtain panels and just drew around them. I also added about a half inch extra so I could use that to fold over the edges. One of the new products that I found this year was a spray adhesive. This stuff works so well on fabric. I love it so much. I'll link it for you down in the description box, but it's one of my new favorite products for adding fabric to anything. I'm going to spray the adhesive all over my fabric, and then I'm going to put my lampshade down and try to get it on my lampshade as smooth as possible. But this fabric spray holds so well. Once I get to the end, I'm going to tuck that edge in, and then I'll just tuck the top and bottom portion. You could always add additional glue if you feel like it's necessary. And then I also cut off any excess fabric. Now with the areas that I didn't paint gold, I'm going to address those. I added in some liquid metal and some of my dark paint because I wanted it to have kind of an antique gold look. And so I just combined two paints that I had and painted that onto the gold portions. Lamps can be so expensive and it's really easy sometimes to find an alternative at the thrift store that you can do a little bit of DIY to make your own. And here's how these lamps turned out styled in my bedroom. I would love to know down in the comments how many of these projects you guys remember from this past year. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so because I have so many fun DIYs planned for you for 2022. Number six was actually another Five Below project that you guys absolutely loved. And this was a tray that I made from some of their rattan shelves. Love this laptop tray, so cute for $5. And I love this big wood cutting board. We're definitely gonna do something with that. How amazing are these rattan shelves? They're $5, I love them. There's four here, I'm gonna grab all of them and style them on my wall. They're gonna be so cute. Well, I didn't end up styling them. I actually made this tray. So I'm gonna cut off this pillow portion because I'm not using that. I also pulled off the Velcro. And then on my shelves, I'm just going to take off the hangers that they have on the back. Now, when I took off the hangers, there were tiny little screw holes. And by sanding those, I was able to take those off pretty well. Next, I'm gonna add some hot glue where the shelf bends and put that upright so it holds in place. Now, I'm only gonna be using two shelves for this project. I used some Gorilla Glue on the base of the shelves. And I also used hot glue so I could have that immediate bond. I will place that tray tray on top of the two shelves. And that's all there is to this tray. You can use it to style different items on your table or on a shelf. Number five was a project you guys commented on so much because I find that the projects you guys like the most are the ones that are the simplest of projects. And I'm with you on that one. I love a simple DIY that looks great. And the number five project is the owl that I picked up from Dollar Tree. So to DIY this owl, I took two coats of Waverly white chalk paint and painted the entire owl. Then I went back in with a piece of sandpaper and pulled off all of the detailing on the owl. You could do this with any sort of figurine that you found at Dollar Tree or a thrift store. It's really versatile. This is how the owl looks styled on my shelf. So two weeks ago, I asked you guys to vote in one of my videos on the top four DIYs. So these videos are in your guys' selected order. So coming in at number four was a Dollar Tree wreath that I did towards the beginning of 2021. 
I was really excited to find these natural wreath forms for just a dollar. You actually got two of them. I love that they came in two different sizes. I thought they would look great grouped together. I grabbed out some of the succulents that I had on hand. Most of these I've picked up at Walmart over the years. So what I like to do whenever I'm creating a wreath is I just kind of start by putting some of my greenery towards like the bottom corners. I think that the greenery honestly looks better when it's concentrated into a corner. So I'm just adding in different pieces, kind of changing up the colors. So it just adds a little bit of dimension and texture to the piece. Once I have it to where I'm happy with it, I'll add in hot glue at the base. Now you may be wondering, how do I cover up the hot glue at the front? Just cut off some little pieces and hot glue those over your hot glue lines and you won't be able to see them at all. Now this is some Dollar Tree burlap and ribbon. I'm just going to string the Dollar Tree burlap and then I will put the ribbon directly on top of it to hang them on my door. This is really simple, but when you add the double wreaths and you put in the texture of the two ribbons, it really makes a statement. Coming in at number three was a Dollar Tree paint pour tray. I have found my love of paint pour this year. You guys are probably gonna be seeing it more next year, but I love doing any sort of paint pour and you guys seem to really love it too. You wanna grab a tray at Dollar Tree, any tray will work. Next, you need to select what colors you're gonna use. This was one that I created in fall, so I'm using sample paints that were in fall colors, but you can use any colors you like. And I'm just going to get a little Dixie cup, and I always usually start off with a white base. Then I'm going to pour in my colors one on top of the other. The cool thing about paint pour is you can always add additional paint, change it up if you're wanting additional colors. So for this one, I actually did two containers of paint because I felt like this was a bigger object. I didn't know how much paint I was going to need. This is kind of my paint pour tray where all the paint goes. So you need something that you don't mind if you get paint all over it. Next, I put this little clear container in the middle because that's gonna help disperse the paint. And then I'm just going to start pouring the paint on. As you're pouring it, you just kind of want to wiggle it back and forth. And then I'm gonna change up my cups just to get a variety in colors. Once I get both of my paint cups on there, I'm going to remove that piece from the middle. Now's the fun part. Now you just need to disperse your paint. So I'm going to be moving the tray around back and forth. The other thing I'm gonna have to do is get the paint over the edges. So I need to kind of make sure that the paint goes over the edges. But this is the fun part because you really see these fun shapes forming. Now I will say a little tip when you're doing this, you wanna try to get as much excess paint off as possible. It's just gonna take it longer to dry, but you want every piece of it to be covered. So I'm adding some additional paint just to make sure I get paint on my handles, but this was so fun to do. I let it dry completely overnight, then I sealed it with a water-based sealer. Coming in at number two is an Ikea light fixture that I updated. You guys love this light fixture. I did have a question about Ikea. Do you guys like seeing Ikea DIYs on my channel or would you prefer some other stores? I would love it if you would go down in the comments and let me know which stores you'd like me to do DIYs at. I really like to go to the stores that you guys have in your area and that you're gonna benefit from. So number two, I'm gonna show you how I put together this light fixture. Ikea has some really inexpensive light fixtures and this one was around $30. I grabbed it, but I wanted to make it a little bit more fun. So I decided to put some tassels on it. I used some macrame cord and some white yarn that I had from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start by wrapping the macrame around a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna wrap it around about five times. Then I took a piece of white yarn and I'm gonna tie it at the top of my cardboard. Then I'm gonna cut off the bottom. Next, I grab some rubber bands from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna wrap those around the top to make a little tassel. Then to brush out my macrame, I actually used a dog brush to loosen up the pieces. I can tell you it took me a while to make all these. I'm not sure exactly how many I made, but after I got them all made, I came back in and tied them on the bottom of my light fixture, and I'm just double knotting them. After that, I'm gonna go back in and cut off any excess yarn, and then I decided to wait until the light fixture was actually hanging up in my kitchen before I cut the bottoms of them. I think this helped to make them a lot more even. And this light fixture is still in my kitchen today and I really love it. 
So number one, hands down, your guys' favorite project from this year was my Dollar Tree rope tray. I've made Dollar Tree rope trays in several different versions. I know why you guys love them. They're so fun to make and they look like they came from Pottery Barn. So this was one of the Pottery Barn rope trays that I was trying to recreate. So to do this one, all you have to do is grab this plastic tray from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some nautical rope. I'll link to the one I use down below, or you can get this version from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start in the center and I'm just gonna add some hot glue to the center. And I'll begin wrapping my rope up and placing it in the center. Now the key whenever you're adding this nautical rope is you wanna make sure that you make it as tight as possible so you don't see any gaps when you're adding it. So I'll add quite a bit of hot glue as I'm wrapping it around. You wanna wrap your rope around until you get past the edge of your tray. Once you get to the very end, you're going to wrap the rope around the back and you can glue it in place. To make it more secure, you can even add tape to it. I knew I was gonna need to make a template to get that fun white border. So I'm just gonna grab some painter's tape and layer it on top of each other. Using craft paper, I cut out a triangle. I'm gonna trace around the triangle. Then I will cut out all of my triangles to use. As I cut them out, I'm just going to place them around the tray. I'm also going to be adding tape to the center so that I can paint around that outer portion. Once everything's taped up, I'm gonna spray the outside portion with two coats of a matte black spray paint. Now, whenever you're spraying fabric or rope, the spray paint really kind of soaks into that rope. So you can go heavy on the spray paint. And I did two thick coats of spray paint on this. Let it dry completely. And then my favorite part is removing the tape. And here's how it looks styled in my home. I hope you guys had fun looking back over these past 10 projects and I can't wait to bring you more projects in 2022. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. It really means so much to me and I'll talk to you guys in our next video. Bye.